So we need to talk about this. This is the next topic on the outline here. K-State's offensive coordinator, Colin Klein, left for Texas A&M. You and I talked about this during the game. He totally should have just stayed. Yeah. Just finish out the bowl game. I understand signing day was before that. It really would have been nice if he would have stayed for at least the bowl game. Um, but Connor Riley, offensive been. line coach, he stepped up as an OC, uh, 435 yards. Like you said, second best yards per play. NC State had given up all season. Um, you know, scored 28 points, 22 first downs. Uh, my biggest issue that I had with Connor Riley was his third down play calls. K State was four of 14 on third down. Now, K State was four of four on third down, which is, or sorry, fourth, fourth down, yeah. which is, you know, pretty huge. So I guess if you add those four back into the third down, because K State ended up converting those, uh, K State was eight of 14, I guess, if you consider that a conversion as well. Now, one of those was a fake punt, but my biggest issue was his third down play calling. Um, I'm not sure I'm quite ready for Connor Riley to be the OC yet. Now, it sounds like that's what's going to happen regardless. Um, sounds like they're just going to you know, promote him to OC and just hire, hire a quarterback coach. My personal opinion, um, this was a good game for him, but – I feel like what's best for K-State is to go out and hire a quarterback guru that knows a lot about offense and bring him in as the offensive coordinator, intermix the old playbook with whatever he has, a new playbook, intermix them together and get a lot of diversity in the offense. I feel like that's what's best for K-State. And that's really what's best for Avery Johnson as well. You want your offensive coordinator to be the quarterback's coach, right? Like that's who he's going to be working with. The most you want that guy to be OC. Maybe they bring in a, a quarterback coach who is co OC. Uh, the quarterback, it could be the passing game coordinator, Connor Riley, the running game coordinator. I'm just not ready for Connor Riley to be the full OC yet, but maybe, you know what? Maybe he'll prove me wrong. I don't know. Kenny, I want to hear your thoughts on uh, Connor Riley's OC and if you think that's a good idea or not for K State. Oh man, this is gonna get clipped, isn't it? I, you it, know, it I don't probably will get clipped. I, I don't have too much of an opinion about Connor Riley being, uh, be, being the OC. I, it didn't seem like he was afraid to call the passing plays. You know, it didn't. I mean, he obviously was calling a bunch of stuff, and you know, you can you can say a lot of that was you know the bowl game and. Uh, you know, really flexing his muscles on on the offensive line since he knew he could pull a lot of this stuff off because he was the offensive line coach and he knew what they were capable of. So he was, he was able to call a little bit more of those gutsy plays and those fourth down, those fourth down plays. Cause he knew he's like, well, I know DJ is going to get the three yards because it's DJ Giddens and it's my offensive line. So, I mean, yeah, like, but I don't know if that's going to actually convert to, or translate to a, a next season, like a consistent basis where he's consistently um, calling these plays. Now I could be wrong. Uh, it, maybe, maybe this is actually the way it's going to be. Um, but I think it's hard to, it's hard to say it for now. If, if he becomes the offensive coordinator, I have to trust the, the coaching decision, the head, like uh, Chris Kleiman, I, I, I have to trust his his input in his decision. Now, it, his decision might be a little biased because he's literally carried this guy everywhere he's been, and and he's just been there all the time with him. And so maybe that might that might sway his vote a little bit. But I, I'm really hoping that uh, he is taking a uh, objective view on this, and he's not weighing too much of his personal feelings and his. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just, it's hard to, uh, make a clear cut statement because it's like, well, he won the game. Like you can't, but it, it, it did not look pretty. <laughs> and, uh, it's hard to say, um, how much better, uh, Colin Klein would have done. It, it's, it's hard to say cause he wasn't there. And so yeah, it's a little frustrating, but, um, what we can say is that Klanderman was still balling out. Not in the first half, but Klanderman does what Klanderman does. He lets you kind of get away with some things in the first half, and then he really hunkers down and 
just shuts you up in the second half. He did it to Texas. He did it to uh, um, Oklahoma State. And, you know, even though, but those, though they were just too far ahead and our offense couldn't convert. But our defense kept bailing out our offense on the, in the back half of the game every time. So Klanderman is, is solid as a rock. You know, I'm, I'm happy that he's there. But as far as our OC goes, man, I don't know. I don't have anything I can really, weigh in on there i don't have a dog in this fight man i really don't you didn't give me an answer yes or no should they hire riley as a new Uh, oc i'm gonna say no what do you think i think because i'm not giving you an answer it has to be no because i feel like if you're talking oc you have to just say yes like definitively but if you're on the fence you just you should go with somebody else then you should be excited about who the the offensive coordinator is and you and i are just not excited about it so it's like it's like, can he do the job? Well, yeah, clearly he can do the job, but is uh it was not pretty at times, man. It really was not. It was frustrating. It, it, fact, should it, he get the it, job? There's two different ways to look at this, and I'm gonna put his full screen for this. Two different ways to look at it. One, K State scored 28 points with a freshman quarterback. Your all American tight end is gone, your number one wide receiver is gone, um, and your offense coordinator is gone. So the guy coming in as a new OC, score 28 points against a very, very good defense. That's the positive outlook to look at it. The the negative side is K-State stalled a ton of times in K-State's offense. I feel like personally almost let NC State back into this game. Like It felt like, man, a lot of these play calls, like, what are we doing? Sometimes it was penalties as well, and that's not really on the OC, but – the play calls after the penalties are like, what are we doing, man? Like, man. and trying to go wide a lot of times with DJ Giddens when he's obviously a downhill between a tackles runner. I don't get that at all. Um, so there's definitely diff- two different ways to look at it. I think you and I both feel that that this Colin Riley is not the right guy for OC, but we feel like Chris Kleiman is loyal to his guys and he's probably just going to promote him from within. We don't think that's the best idea, but I guess we're just going to have to get used to that. So that's our thoughts on the OC. Yeah. We got some comments that came in while I was on my rant there. It says, I'm not on board with Riley. Need another guy to be co-offensive coordinator. Yep. I think that's what we're kind of saying here, man. Yep. I kind of agree there. And then I'll, t- I'll, I'll like to see the Liberty offense coordinator come in. Hmm. Yeah, so the Liberty offense coordinator, um, I think, is a former – quarterback for Clemson. Um, I'd have to look up his name, but he's he's killed it this year. They're 12 and 0. He'd be a great addition him or the Texas State uh, offensive coordinator. Both of them would be the top two in my list. Um, but I think it his name like, is Korn. It seems like Korn it seems like Chris Kleiman is like really good at networking with other coaches. It seems like, you know, he's like, it it seems like he just knows everybody and has a great relationship with everybody, which is super cool. And so I'm sure he's going to make the best decision possible for his, I mean, it's, it is his team ultimately, you know, it's his decision and it's his, it's his butt on the line. You know, if things don't go well, you know, he's the one that, I mean, yeah, you could blame the offensive coordinator, but who's the guy that's hiring the offensive coordinator, you know? So I'm sure he's got to think about this and he's got some time to think about it. You know, they're going to enjoy this win, but, and, but I think they, uh, they need to make a decision pretty soon. And um, I, I just trust, I trust that Chris Kleiman's going to do the right thing. He's going to make the right decision. And we, for better or for worse, man, we, we ride and die purple, man. We bleed purple. So, Absolutely. We, uh, we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be supportive either way and just know that whatever the decision is, it's the best decision for us and we got to just go with it. So, so the, the two OCs that I'd like us to hire is Willie Korn, uh, the Liberty OC, like you talked about and Robbie Schultz talked about and Texas state's OC is Mac Leftwich. So those would be the two that I would go after, but we'll see what happens. You know, I, I, I would like see. Michael Bishop to be the offensive coordinator. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'd like to see uh, Jake Waters come back as a quarterback coach. That'd be pretty sick. He was a number one quarterback recruit in the JUCO rankings. In fact, I think he was a number one overall player in terms of JUCO rankings back in 2012. Uh, and he is an offensive analyst for Iowa State. We know he can throw the ball around. I'd love to see him come back as a quarterback coach if you're just going to hire within uh, in terms of Connor Riley as OC. Damn.